It is this time of the week again. We are reviewing your Underwood films. Welcome, Sebastian. Thank you. And uh, actually, it's not a welcome. It's a, a hello again because he spent he stayed in my studio throughout uh, the whole time since our last uh, recording. So. Yeah, how do you do? You feel at home here in my yeah, totally, place? Yeah, totally. A lot of cameras, a lot of fun stuff. So yeah, okay. I, I feel like some cameras are disappearing <laughs> ever since we started this uh, series here. Yeah, you should come to me one time. <laughs> okay, well, sorry for blabbering around. Let's get started with today's reviewing your underwater films. <laughs> Underwater filmmakers and welcome back to another episode of reviewing your underwater films. Today we'll be reviewing a film made by Holger Ibsen. Thank you very much Holger for submitting your film and letting us review it here in this series. And uh, without any further ado, let's dive right into that production of yours. It's going to start the video here, here we go. Ooh, that looks windy. That looks a bit windy. Okay, I like the suitable music. Bit of an establishing story. Oh, interesting choice. Black and white. Not so black and white anymore. Thank you. 
Right. Well done, Holger. Um, where do we start? Generally speaking, a nice, um, a nice piece of underwater imagery. Um, there was definitely quite a few shots in there that were really, really good. Um, some of them had some really nice colors. We could see that you were using. Um, video lights to um, to shoot some of these shots but then it was confusing to me sometimes because some of those shots the colors and if you've done any correction the correction looked really good on these shots but then you had other shots in there that were very off uh, when it comes to the colors and mm -hmm. that confused me a little bit and then sometimes you also put in some black and white shots um, which honestly speaking did not really work for me it was there was I couldn't see any concept of when you would put the black and white shots in there and the reason why you would do this and how this would benefit the story or of the video or the video itself. This didn't really make much sense to me. Um, some of the shots um, were a little shakier than what I would have liked. Uh, so try using um, some image stabilization po in post, excuse me, um, if that's possible. Um, and uh, one thing that I just really dislike is zooming Zoom. while you're filming. Yeah. 
uh, and you've done that on many occasions, I would just try to avoid that completely. I don't think it does anything good to an image if while you're filming something, you're zooming in. I know that sometimes it is tempting because you wanna get closer to your object, and it's fine if you film that zooming process, but then cut it out in post-production. Don't yeah. include it in your film, just use the, the stable uh, shorter shot that is that has the framing that you want and leave the rest out. Uh, and that's probably uh, the biggest advice that I can give you. Just leaving out the zooming parts would have made this video uh, a lot better than what it already is. I do agree, yeah. I mean, yeah, as you already said, there are some very nice uh, images in there. Um, some need improvement. Um, I think the overall editing process, um, you could improve a little bit more. Um, just um, get rid of some de uh, parts which are not that interesting for somebody viewing viewing the video for the first time or only one time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like if you if you show like I don't know maybe the fifth time the boat, um, it's. It's very nice for the people who are on the same liveaboard, but if you show the video to other people, like repetitive shots, um, I don't want to say it's get boring, but it like you're losing the attention of the, of the viewer. Mm. Um, for me as well, you could work with uh, black and white, um, but then you would have to work with it um, the whole in the whole video and not jumping from colored bl back to black and white. It just just doesn't make any sense because as Matthias said, there's no, we couldn't find out any rule when you did it. Um, yeah, um, for the shots with the with the lights, um, I think you could maybe work uh, a little bit on the position of the lights. There are some shots where you see that you got a lot of backscatter, so just maybe work on 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 the position. Just get them further out if possible. Angle them a little bit further out so they don't uh, light the scene in front of the lens and uh, and the object and just they meet the beams meet as close as possible to the object to avoid uh, even um, especially at night uh, a lot of backscatter so it, you could uh, produce nicer um, or cleaner images um, yeah mm, yeah one thing that just that I just remembered again while you were talking is the inclusion of stills oh, yeah. uh, in a video it's just personally something that I don't really like. I don't think uh, you should be mixing stills with uh, video clips. If you have stills and you want to do a little montage, like a slideshow or something, just do all stills and keep that as a separate piece and keep the videos, uh, the video clips in a video as it is uh, by itself. I don't think it adds anything to it if you if you include uh, stills into a uh, a video clip. But that's just my personal opinion. There is definitely people out there that think it's a good idea to do that uh, um, as well. So don't get me wrong. There, it's just my personal opinion. I wouldn't do that yeah. uh, in my films. I, I agree on that one because the problem with, with images with still images is that you're going from a moving picture to something which is frozen. It's like always like you're coming from movement mm. and like it's frozen and then it's getting again. If you really, really, really want to, to use still images, there are possibilities of like um, animate them, just like zoom in, zoom out, whatever, just to keep, to keep it alive. But me personally as well, there are very rare occasions where I would use a still image um, in, in, a, in a video yeah. because it's like very hard to keep a, a, a film flowing if you're using um, still images. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, so that brings our video review for today to an end. Holger, thank you so much for submitting this video and letting us review it within this series here. As always, we will be putting links to the video itself as well as to your YouTube channel down in the video description below. So for everyone else, guys, if you wanna go and pay Holger a visit on his uh, YouTube channel, leave him a like, leave him a subscription. You can do that through the links below the video. Um, and if you do have a video yourself that you want Sebastian and myself to review within this series, feel free to send me the link to the uploaded video um, to contact at MatthiasLibo.com uh, and we'll be more than happy to review your video as well and give you some feedbacks uh, from our side as to uh, what you could improve and what you could work on to make your video work even better than what it already is. That's all I have to say. I'll leave you the last word for today. All right, so guys, if you liked that video, um, give us a like and uh, consider subscribing to our channel if you didn't uh, do that already. And uh, yeah, 
Hope to see you next time in uh, reviewing you underwater videos. It's films, it's not videos, but it is, yeah. We'll see you next time. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.